These are the notes for H3-9 on equivalent forms. So this lesson here, we're going to start out with a little warm-up, and it's going to ask you to simplify the following expressions by multiplying the binomials. So what you'll see here, we have a quantity that is the square root of x minus 1 times the quantity of the square root of x minus 5. So we're going to go ahead here, and you can multiply it any which way you want. You can use the generic rectangle, or you can foil it out. I'm going to go ahead and foil it there. We've got the square root of x times the square root of x should give us x. The square root of x times negative 5 will give us negative 5 times the square root of x. We've got negative 1 times the square root of x gives us a negative square root of x. And then negative 1 times negative 5 should give us a positive 5. Now, when we take that here and we combine our like terms, we'll end up with x minus 6 times the square root of x plus 5. Okay, if you got that, then you're on the right track. Uh, if you want to pause the video here and try the second one and then check to see if you get it right, that might be helpful. All right, I'm going to do it right now. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply x squared times x squared, that's going to give us x to the fourth power. x squared times 4 is going to give us a 4x squared, so plus 4x squared. Negative 2 times x squared would be minus 2x squared. And then negative 2 times 4 would be a negative 8 or minus 8. We combine our like terms here and we get x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 8. So if that's what you came up with, good job. Now there's a reason we're multiplying those here for our warm-up. Um, okay, if we think back here, um, this year we've talked a lot about quadratics and things being in quadratic form. And when we were doing solving quadratics earlier in the year, we talked a lot about multiplying binomials. Most of our binomials look something like this, though, right? We had an, just an x, you know, say like x plus 3, and let's say maybe an x minus 6. But we were used to having just a single x term there, so that when we multiplied it out, we'd always have an x squared. And in this case here, we'd had minus 3x minus 18. So we're used to seeing it here where we've got an x squared term and then an, a single x term here, right? This is like x to the first power. Well, this quadratic form that you see here says ax squared or x to the 2n, okay, so then plus bx, instead of the first, it's to the power of n, plus c is equal to 0. Okay, so the thing that's different about this versus when you've seen it in the past there, we now have just these n values here. Okay, so what we're looking at here, if we have a trinomial that's in this form, as long as the first exponent is twice the middle exponent, then we can consider our trinomial also in quadratic form, whether it's actually a quadratic or not. So what does that mean? What does that all mean? Let's look above here at the examples that we just did, okay, our warm-up. If we look at the term here, our x value on the first one, right, so we're talking about this one right here, our exponent on that is a 1. And then if we look at the middle term here, right, when you think about the square root of x, the square root of x is like saying x to the 1 half power, right? This is really like saying 1 half power. So when we compare these two exponents, right, our middle exponent is half of that first exponent. So that kind of meets our definition that we're looking at here. Although this expression is not quadratic, it's written using a quadratic form. Look at the second example here, right? We had our x term here at the beginning here, and that exponent there we have is going to be 4. And then when we look at our middle term here, we have the, the 2 times x, right? Well, that x is actually being squared. So when you compare those exponents, this 2 is half of what the 4 is. So this one, although it's not quadratic because it's a fourth degree polynomial, 
it's written in a quadratic form. So that's what this lesson is about. We're going to use the patterns that we know uh, from you know, simplifying quadratics, factoring quadratics, in order to help us solve other equations. So example one states, write each equation in quadratic form if possible. So we're just trying to get it to match our definition that's in green above here. So when I look at this first one, we have x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 7. When we think about what term is actually being squared to get our x to the fourth, right? we can think about that as x squared. And we're taking x squared and squaring it. And we raise a power to a power, we get x to the fourth. So if we're asked to rewrite this in quadratic form, it would be x squared squared plus 5 times the quantity of x squared minus 7. Okay, let's look at B. On B, we're asked, is this one, could it possibly be written in quadratic form? Well, let's look at the exponents here. We have an exponent that's 10 and an exponent that's 5. Our exponent here of 5 is half of what 10 is, so then we can write this one in a quadratic form. Just like on that last one, and I probably should have pointed that out, right? We had a 2 and a 4. Well, 2 is half of 4, so that one checked out for us. So let's do this one here. What are we squaring to get x to the 10th? Well, we'd be squaring x to the 5th. So x to the 5th squared minus 4 times an x to the 5th plus 12. All right, so we've got this one in its quadratic form. Looking at letter C, we have x to the 9th plus 7x to the 3rd minus 5. Is this one able to be written in quadratic form? The answer to that is no. Okay. This cannot be written in a quadratic form. And why is that? Oops, I don't want to. That's not a question. That's a statement. There we go. This cannot be written in quadratic form. And the reason it can't be, right, is when we look at the exponent here, we've got a 3. So this exponent in the front would have to be just twice that 3. So we'd either need a 6 up here, or we would have to have like a 4.5 um, on our middle term there. So we'll say the middle term is not half of the first term, or the exponents anyway. So the middle exponent is not half of the first exponent. Or if you want to word that differently, or however you wish to write it there, just as long as you understand there that since that exponent, this middle exponent here, is not half of this exponent, therefore it can't be written as a quadratic. Looking at D now, let's jump over here. We've got x to the 1 half power minus 2x to the 1 fourth power plus 7. Well, let's compare 1 fourth and 1 half. 1 fourth is half of a half, so therefore we can write this one in a quadratic form. So for this one, we're going to say here x to the 1 fourth power squared. Okay, that would give us x to the 1 half minus 2 times x to the 1 fourth power plus 7. And then if you want, go ahead and pause the video and uh, you can try E here to figure out and see if you uh, understand what you're doing with this or not. I'm going to go ahead and do it now. So with this one, we're comparing the 1 third power to the 2 thirds power, which is half. 1 third is half of 2 thirds. So when we write this one out, we'll say x to the 1 third power squared minus 8 times x to the 1 third power plus 9. Now that one is written in a quadratic form. Something that you should kind of take note of here 
is notice this term that we're seeing in all these problems that keeps reappearing is the same as the middle term in the trinomial, right? We've got an x squared here. Both of these were considered to be x squareds. Uh, down here, we had an x to the 1 fourth. And then notice we had an x to the 1 fourth and an x to the 1 fourth there. You know, this holds true. We have x to the 1 third. So we have an x to the 1 third here and an x to the 1 third here. The difference is that that first one is being squared. Okay, so what are we going to use this for? Why are you making us do this, right? That's the question you're asking yourself. Well, this is going to allow us to use this skill to help us solve equations like the ones you're going to see here. So example two says use factoring to solve each equation. These ones all have whole number exponents. Okay, so at any point here, please make sure that you, you know, take the time to pause the video. Once you feel like you've got a grasp on the concept, work it out and then see if you get the same answer. I'm going to go through and explain them all. So, you know, if you get stuck, you can go back and watch. Here we go. Letter A, x to the fourth minus 17x squared plus 16. First of all, this power is half of that one. Therefore, we know we can write it in a quadratic form. Now, rather than take it and write it like we were doing above, I'm going to go ahead and just start the factoring process. If we think about this, right, we're going to be multiplying some number in the front times the other number in the front to get x to the fourth. So what number are we going to have to have in there, or what expression? Right. That would be x squared times an x squared. And the rest is just about factoring like you normally would. We know here that we've got a positive in the back, so our signs are going to be the same. They're both going to be minus. And then our factors of 16 that add to 17 would be 16 and 1. And there's several ways that you can go ahead and solve these. Um, I'm going to look at these ones as being able to factor again, right? These are just a difference of squares. And everybody should know how to factor a difference of squares. So we could factor this x squared minus 16 into x plus 4 times x minus 4. And then we could factor this x squared minus 1 into x plus 1 times x minus 1. In which case, now you've got four factors being multiplied that gives you zero. So you can use your zero product property, right? Set each factor equal to zero. And sure, you can cut out steps, you know, when you're actually going through and doing it. I'm just doing notes, so I want to make sure that people are able to see where things are coming from in case they forget. But what we're going to end up here with is x can equal negative 4 positive 4, negative 1, or positive 1. And that would be the solution to this problem there. Now, as always, you'll want to go back and check when you get answers and plug them back into the equation. But for time's sake, I'm going to let you know that all the answers I come up with here on this example are going to work. So let's do the second problem here. Let's go ahead here and look at letter B. We have x to the fourth plus 3x to the third minus 18x squared equals 0. And when I compare the exponents here, 3 is not half of 4. So this one cannot be written as a quadratic right now um, by the way it stands. But if we look at this one here, right, we actually have a greatest common factor of x squared. So we can take this. It's like we're dividing it by an x squared. So we're going to have an x squared times the quantity of x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. And now this resulting trinomial is actually quadratic, right? Because we have a power of 1 here and a power of 2 in the front. So we can take that and factor that again. We'll bring down our x squared, set up our two binomials there. We should have an x and an x. One's got to be plus, one's got to be minus. And then factors of 18 that have a difference of 3. Looks like it would be a positive 6 and a negative 3. And now, once again, just using our zero product property, set each factor equal to 0. 
and we get here that x equals 0, x equals negative 6, and x equals 3. And like I said here with this one, you can go back and check your answers by plugging them in, but they're all going to work here. Let's look at letter C. For letter C, we have x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12 equals 0. So with this one, notice that our exponent is half of the first exponent there. I'm sorry, our middle exponent is half of it. And now go through and try to solve it. As we factor, we should have an x squared in the front. Both the signs should be minus. And then factors of 12 that add to 7 would be 4 and 3. Now, as we look at x squared minus 4, yes, that's the difference of squares, and we could factor it again. Or, remember, you do have the option where you could take it and you could set it equal to 0 as it is and solve it that way. I'm going to set both of those equal to 0. So we know we would add 4 to each side. We've got x squared is equal to 4. So now we're going to come in and take the square root of each side. And this is where you have to be careful, because remember, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. The square root of 4 is 2. And that's just going to tell us here, then, that x is going to equal positive or negative 2. Okay, so really important there. And, you know, it'd probably be important there for you to go back and plug those 2 and negative 2 into the equation to see that it works. And let's do the second equation. We're going to add 3 to each side. So we have x squared is equal to 3. Take the square root. So we're going to end up here with the absolute value of x is equal to the square root of 3, which is going to give us then x is going to equal positive or negative radical 3. Now, if you take any of those answers and plug them back into this original equation, okay, it's going to make a true statement there. So I'm saving you the time of having to, you know, check those answers, but that will become important here later on. Letter D. Obviously, this one is not quadratic, right? When you look at it, it is not quadratic. This is actually a difference of cubes, which we'll learn how to factor and play with later on. But we already know how to solve this one here. We can go ahead here and add our 216 to each side. We have x to the third is equal to 216. To get rid of the x to the third, we're going to take the cube root. And that's going to leave us with just an x. There's no need for absolute value when you have an odd power that you're dealing with there. And x is going to end up equaling 6. So in this case, we get one answer. All right, so that's the beginning here. If you are having questions, please make sure you mark them down and you can ask about them in class. Let's go ahead and move into the next part of it here. Oops, let me go ahead and clear that out too. All right, so example three. Use factoring to solve each equation. But now we're going to use rational exponents. So the first thing here, we'll look at letter A, which is x to the 2 thirds power plus x to the 1 third power minus 12 equals 0. We've got a 1 third and a 2 thirds, which 2 thirds is twice what 1 third is. So we can write this one in a quadratic form. If you want to pause the video and try to factor it and then see if you got it right, that would be a good time to do it. I'm going to do it right now. So when I'm factoring this, in order to end up with x to the 2 thirds, I'm going to multiply an x to the 1 third times another x to the 1 third. And we know that's the same thing as the cube root. If you wanted to write it that way, you could. But I'm going to stick with the rational exponents right now because that's what this section is about. Now we know our signs are going to be different. And then we're looking for factors of 12 that have a difference of 1. That's going to be 4 and negative 3. 
Let's set them each equal to zero. X to the one third plus four equals zero. And you have X to the one third minus three equals zero. So after we isolate X here, we have X to the one third equals negative four and X to the one third power equals three. Okay, so now, if you're thinking about, this is like cube root, right? It's like when we're taking the cube root of x, and you know to get rid of the cube root, we're going to raise it to the third power, so that's just what we're going to do here. We want that exponent on the x to become 1. So when I do 1 third, and I'm raising it to the third power, we're going to multiply, and that's going to leave us with just an x, but then we also have to raise the negative 4 to the third power, and that's going to give us a negative 64. Then on the same uh, on the same lines here, the second one will cube each side, and we're going to end up on that one with x is equal to 27. Now it's important here that you start checking these, especially when you get some rational exponents or deal with you know things in root form. So just to show you here, if I take negative 64 and I raise it to the two-thirds power plus a negative 64, and I do need parentheses around that, uh, to the one-third power minus 12, okay, it should equal zero. Well, the cube root, right, the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4, and then when we square that, we get 16, so that's like 16 plus we already said the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4, so we have 16 plus negative 4 minus 12, and you're going to see here that we get 0 equals 0 when we simplify that down. So that one works. For time's sake, because you don't want to watch me check answers here, 27 will also work. Let's look at B. Why don't you go ahead and pause it and try to do this one, and then play it to see how you do. All right, so b, y to the 4 thirds minus 13y to the 2 thirds plus 36 equals 0. So factoring this here, I'm going to have a y to the 2 thirds. That's going to be in the front of each of those binomials. And then I'm looking for factors of 36 that add to 13. So we're looking at... 9 and 4. And so we can take each of these and set them equal to 0 to solve it. So once you isolate the y, you've got y to the 2 thirds power is equal to 9, and y to the 2 thirds power is equal to 4. Okay, now, we want to end up with a single y down here, right? A y to the first power. So we need to raise this, right, to the power of 3 over 2. So it's the reciprocal. 2 thirds times 3 halves is going to give us 1. And that's what we're looking for there as our exponent, is that 1. And then we're also going to raise 9 to the 3 halves power. So thinking about the bottom first, the square root of 9 is 3. And then when we raise that to the third power, we get 27. And then we're going to do the same thing here with that second one. We're going to raise it to the 3 halves power. And then raise the other side to the 3 halves power. And we'll end up here with a y to the first power equals square root of 4 is 2. And then raise to the third, we're going to get 8. And for time's sake here, I'm going to tell you that both of those work out. All right, into the last ones here. Hang in there. I know this has kind of been long, but lots of good examples here for you to be able to refer back to if you get stuck on your assignments. So example four. Use factoring to solve each equation. And now we're going to be looking at the root form. So with this one, we have the square root of y and a y. So let's remember, this is like saying y to the one-half power. And since this is like...
y to the first, this can be written in a quadratic form. So when we take this and set this up, try to factor it, we're going to have the square root of y. Both our signs are going to be minus. And then factors of 7 that add to 8 would be just 7 and 1. Let's take each factor, set it equal to 0, just like we've done on all of the other ones. And we get the square root of y is equal to 7, and the square root of y is equal to 1. Now, as I told the kids in class, every year there's kids who, when they're solving these kinds of problems here, they get down to this point, and then all of a sudden they try to like balance the equation by like taking the square root here. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. We need to get rid of the square root, so I'm going to actually go in and erase that out of there because it shouldn't be there. We want to take it and square both sides to get our y out of the square root, so we have y is equal to 49. For the square root of y is equal to 1, we square both sides, and we're going to get that y is equal to 1. And for time's sake here, I'm going to tell you that if we take them and plug them back in, both of these ones are going to work. Let's get to the last one here. Letter B, we have x minus 5 times the square root of x minus 36 equals 0. So again, square root of x and x, we've got, you know, to the first power and to the one-half power. So we're going to be able to factor this, hopefully. Let's take it and set it up. We've got two sets of binomials. We have the square root of x in the front of each. One's got to be plus, one's got to be minus. And then we've got factors of 36 that have a difference of 5. So we're going to say minus 9 here and plus 4. Now use your zero product property just like in all of the other ones. We now have the square root of x is equal to negative 4 and the square root of x is equal to 9. Okay, hopefully you're starting to see some red flags there. We'll see here in just a moment. I'm going to square both sides here, square both sides here. And we end up with x equals 16 and x equals 81. Now here's the important part of why I want you to make sure you're checking things. If we take our 81 and we plug it in, we've got 81 minus 5 times the square root of 81 and then minus 36 should equal 0. Well, 81, the square root of 81 is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. So 81 minus 45 minus 36 should equal 0. 81 minus 45 is 36. So when we do that there, we get 0 equals 0. We know that 81 does check out. It is a solution. But let's look and see what happens when we plug in 16. We're going to say 16 minus 5 times the square root of 16 minus 36 equals 0. Well, this 16, we take the square root as 4, and we multiply it by negative 5, it's going to be negative 20. So 16 minus 20 minus 36 equals 0. Well, what we end up with here in the end is a negative 40 equals 0, and that's not true. Therefore, our x equals 16 does not work, and our only answer there is 81. Remember, this is what we would call an extraneous solution, that x is equal to 16. So 81 would be our answer for that problem. Okay, hopefully you got a little bit out of this here. If you have questions, please make sure that you are coming into class and asking them or going somewhere to get some help. This is lesson H3-9 on equivalent forms. Um, thank you for watching.